celebrates the 20s love edition. And I guess you all experience the love that the organizers put into this festival and also the love and unity among the people at this festival. And it is this love and unity which characterizes the Jamaica Reggae Revival and that we are going to talk about in this session. A topic, I have to admit, is very dear to me because it again strengthens my love and passion for the Jamaican music and culture. And I want to share it with you and with as many people as possible. And I'm so glad that so many people came out today. And I want to cite Chronix because he said, as Dutty Bookman reminded me this morning, the reggae revival, it's not only about the artists, it's about the people. It's about you, it's about me, it's about us. And before I start, I of course want to introduce the panel first. At the very, I think it's right, we have Pia Tozzi from Bologna, the radio broadcaster and DJ. And next to Pierre is David Katz, author and journalist from London. And next to me is Pete Lilly and I'm Ellen Curlings. We are both editors of Rhythm Magazine. And of course, I have the honor to introduce the artist. Next to me is Protégé, as you all know. He has released two awesome albums, and you should make sure you get them, which is the Seven Year Itch and the Eight Year Affair. He's a DJ, and he combining the rapping and DJ with roots reggae, and is highly influenced by the sound of Sly and Robbie in the 80s. And then next to Protégé, yeah, I should show the cover of Protégé as well. <laughs> and next to Protégé, we have Kabaka Pyramid. Yeah. Welcome, Kabaka Pyramid. Kabaka started out with hip hop and now combines the hip hop aesthetics with roots reggae and has released an EP called Rebel Music and is about to release another EP called Lead the Way. Bless it, bless it, bless it. And next to Kabaka we have Ibama, the black youth of our who grew up on really traditional roots reggae music and he's from Linstead. Some of you might know Linstead, it's not far away from Kingston where Max Romeo is also based. He started to work with Max Romeo, also worked with Philip Patus Borel and is working on his album now. And next to Ibama, we have Dutty Bookman, writer and historian and chronicle of the movement and the reggae revival. So you see, it's not only about artists, it's about art. You know, and yeah, I hand the mic over to Pete and... Okay, I'll just go on. <laughs> Okay, be before we, we start, I would like to put a quite general question to Dutty because I want you all to grasp the meaning of the reggae revival. So, Dutty, just a simple thing, what is the reggae revival? Greetings, everybody. Um, I hope you can all understand me. Uh, I, I apologize for not being able to speak Espanol. <laughs> Um, the reggae revival is the spirit of the times. This is how, how I like to put it. Across the world, there are a lot of people um, experiencing a spiritual awakening. Um, and I find myself to be one of those people. And we get inspiration from artists who speak 
that energy, who sing the message of that energy. And that is what the revival is about. So I basically just offered the contribution of a term to name it so that people can start speaking about it. And I give thanks that we're here today in Spain um, to continue this conversation. And yeah, give a round of applause, feel free. <laughs> And Daddy, how important is the reggae revival to Jamaica? Uh, I think it is very, 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 very important um, because Jamaican music um, in the mainstream, the youth are not being exposed a lot to the positive elements of Jamaica. Whereas like here in Europe, I know that um, people really stand up for roots and culture more so than dancehall in, in, in many respects. But in Jamaica, the messaging that's coming out towards the youth is very unhealthy. Um, and it's coming a lot and um, you have people um, who don't want to see their children grow up in that kind of society getting those kind of messages that are negative not becoming spiritually balanced and um, the reggae revival now with these three artists and many many more you know like I don't even know half of them but there are so many artists rising up now in Jamaica who are coming back with something edifying something that feed your soul and, and your mind and and, and and Jamaica has not seen this in a long time I mean it, 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 it kind of came to a, a end after the passing of Bob Marley and that era that that era represented and it kind of came back in spurts and there were there are still good artists who are considered elders today who carry on the message and and and, and uh, feed people properly through music but um, we haven't seen it in this mass in a long time. Like, it, 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 it's easily, it could be three other artists here. It could be 10 of us. It could have been a dozen of us right now because there are so many coming out with positivity. So it's important because the youths are now seeing these people and when they see them on the street off stage, you see that they're really living the life that they preach and they're really living in love and unity and giving positive vibes and it's important for the youth to see that because in Jamaica we're not used to that we're used to a lot of negativity these days um, and I, I don't know if, you have, if you've never been to Jamaica it might be hard to imagine that because you hear so much greatness coming out on the music but it, it really is a, we're in a kind of social crisis and, and I believe not to say that the reggae revival is the saviour but I think it's an important element in a spiritual awakening that's happening Give thanks, Daddy. And I would also like, I, I start with uh, OJ next to me, to ask, uh, ask you, so what does the revival mean to you? I think, you know, everybody of you has something more to add, and I just wanted to, to get it from the artists as well. All right, blessed love, greetings to one and all the rest of the panel, everybody that's here, give thanks for your presence. Um, the revival, you see now, the, 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 the music started to make a shift. I used to always tell um, Dottie that I wish I was born in the 60s because I wanted to be a part of a, a movement, a part of something special. And when I came out in 2009, it was a very different um, scene. I, I always like to say I didn't have much company, you know what I mean? I didn't have, there, there weren't many other artists where I could say, yeah, I like what they're doing. And, I'm feeling this energy and something can build on it and um, it really started to manifest through Jamnesia that's a, a, a surf camp in Jamaica where Billy Mystic former I mean still lead singer Mystic Revealers did so big up to the Mystic Revealers and he he really he really took us under his wing and started to teach like without teaching just giving us an opportunity to perform and grow and that place is i met i met janine there i met raging fire there um first time i saw kabaka sing he was there he was rapping and um he had an arsenal jersey you now it's barcelona <laughs> but uh, um, that's where i saw him first and i mean a lot of us met up there and started out so the movement started to grow but it didn't really 
have a name you understand it was when Dotty Dotty called me and he was like he, he was speaking to me about the Harlem Renaissance and about all the things that happened in that period and that it's because it was called the Harlem Renaissance we can go back and, and journal it and, and, and see about it so he thought it was very important to give what was happening a name you understand but the the, the name is is appropriate because it's a revival a lot of people will have heard you know criticism about well reggae wasn't dead but as Dotty said it it's really hard to revive something that's dead we were never saying it was dead we we're just saying that actively the youths of our generation didn't have the voices giving them this message and what the revival is about mainly is about the unity amongst artists about the, the the need for no competition because we, we live in a world where everything is, is is taught to us from we're two three years old that you have to compete and this is the grades in school and you came first in class and you are this and you are that and you are the baddest singer you are the wickedest lyricist you are this you are that whatever and it's like it's like we found a way or trying to find a way to unify and move forward so that we can be here as artists all having our individual careers but still supportive and seeing and very happy to see each other there for me personally me and um, Kabaka used to live in the same house for some period of time and we, we talked about being here doing festivals and it is because of the unity that is being being portrayed by all of us that we can all be here to share it together you know give thanks give thanks Audrey. And nomads, I met nomads at, at Jamnesia too. Well, you have everybody on the cover, Ellie. <laughs> okay, Kab Kabaka, maybe you can also give us your stand and what the revival means to you. Well, first of all, well, massive greetings to everyone in other house tonight. You know what I mean? Before I even say anything, I want to extend my gratitude towards Ellen and Pete and all Rhythm Magazine for really highlighting the youths them and supporting the youths them. You know what I mean? By really a strength and I mean a whole lead to it, trust me. You know, me never really, me is not a man where, where dream a lot still. Me don't know about other people, but me never really did expect for see myself on a magazine cover one day. You know what I mean? So it's like kind of surreal to see it. But it's just, it's really testament to show what the movement has done. You know what I mean? Because everyone can operate as an individual. But one thing that really characterizes the, the rise in consciousness right now is the collective consciousness. You know what I mean? Seeing yourself as a part of a whole, as a part of a system. You know what I mean? Sometimes we look at it like we are a football team. And you know what I mean? You have one man to play defense, one man to play forward. You know what I mean? You have your, your photographers, you have your camera people, you have your artists, you have your designers, you have your chef. You know what I mean? Everybody does come in together and I think that is what really characterizes who are going in this thing. You know what I mean? The, the, the individuality for no say. There was a time when, when artists collaborate is usually because they're from the same camp. They work with the same producer. But no, it's like, if you see me and Ibama do a song together, you're not going to really think it's strange because we don't come from the same camp. Me just meet Ibama the other day, but when me and Ibama link, it's like we are brother from time. You know what I mean? Because there's no competition going on. You know what I mean? Me and Protégé work. You know what I mean? Me and Chronics them work. It's like, it's no real, it's not a real thing for really come together and to unify. And it's that absence of the whole ego factor for me that really characterize the movement yeah, yeah. and more and get it straight still because a lot of people might feel that the revival is some clique or some kind of closed network of artists but from you now really see yourself as an individual and you really pre in what is the benefit of the people with your music then you are a part of the revival you know what I mean that is what I truly believe it's not about who link with who or who you see in that picture there, a smile up with put up. That means say, them in the revival. No, it's not about that. It's about your approach to the music. Your approach to even professionalism. You know what I mean? Do, 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 do you stick to your appointments when you have an interview? You know what I mean? When somebody's trying to get a hold of you, do you deal with them with respect? 
or do you deal with them with disrespect? You know what I mean? These are the things where I try to revive professionalism in the music, you know, setting a higher standard moving forward. Come on, give thanks. Okay, I have a man. Oh, you know, I like what Kabaka said that you just recently meet because that's what we always try to explain to the people. It's not a clique or something. It's, yeah. You know. You want to give thanks again. This is Ibamar. You know, doing a status. So, I think I think many of what I would love to say, you know, like you know, we're breaching them say, you know. But you know, when we really started out, like 2010. You know, we start record a tough gang with Roland McDermott and Jeremy Edwards and we record a song named Will I Wait. You know, it was a very nice song at the time. But you know, for me personally, it was really about maintaining roots music. Because I grew up in a house who used to dance to reggae music. You know, the 60s, 60s and 70s music. And my late 80s born. So we are trying to maintain that kind of music where we grew up on at the time. And 2010, we used to hear about Protege, we hear about, you know, like at the time, you know, we hear about some other artists, really. But some artists never maintain the consciousness, you know, and that is where we fall short of the whole movement. And reggae revival to me personally, because it's a personal thing to me, yes, because me grew up in the country, you know, most of them youth, they are town youth, they are city youth. No, country youth, you know, city youth, you know, yeah? <laughs> So, most, so, you know, we live in the countryside. So when we make music in a city, we go right back into the country, which is Linstead, St. Catherine. So when we start making music now, is the music really brought us together and not a personal thing. So it's not outside of music, me meet Protege, me meet Kabaka, me meet Chronix, Archanine, or any other artist. It's, it's music. So what we're trying to maintain is, just like my said, is is a collective thing. You know, we're, we're trying to keep the music on a high and it should be positive. Reggae revival is not that music, it's not that the, the, the positive side or reggae music, the dead. But, you know, it's like, it's like bringing, it, bringing it to the forefront, you know, so people can understand. So music did always a make and it not stop make. You know, so we're creating a balance. We love hip hop, we love R&B, we love dancer, we love all genre of music. But we're trying to create a balance and positive music is what I do. And we're bridging them do. So we promote that. Yeah, but yes, you can. I'm a and we're gonna listen to a little piece of music now before we, we get on. <laughs> In and them garrison without no sorry, without excuse. So Germany in them lovely, everybody gets abused. And everybody have them views now. The media is on, so now we you get your news. And the blood up on them shoes now. When they walk in the trains, look them hard in them face and say, a surf club in Kingston and there were some other location where a lot of the revival artists started out on and the reggae revival is also like a revival of live music and Protégé is just touring with his band The Indignation and you're gonna love it when you see it tonight and Proto I would like to ask you so how important is live music for the reggae revival? Um, well live, live, live 
life opposite a death. Um, <laughs> I would say, well, not really, not technically, but we know we're not that. But um, the, 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 the thing is that um, when I was watching the greats do it, Bob Marley, you know, Black Uhuru, Peter Tosh, the list goes on. I really like to see the, the unit on stage. We saw that the music went away from that in Jamaica in the in the late 80s going into the 90s until the band, the musicians were kind of pushed to the side and the focus went on the artist, it's you know him him or herself. But when we realize now that the, the musicians play a, 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 such an important role in the music because it's the feel, it's a natural, it's somebody standing there with an instrument, so, something with strings that doesn't look like it's supposed to make sound but yet you know the musicians make it, make it magical so for me it was always it was always um, being able to go on the road with a band and play music because it's just so much more energy than to see somebody singing on, on tracks. I have had to come to Europe and perform on tracks and to me you, you really haven't seen me perform if you've seen me performing on tracks. Even Ratatam itself I had to turn down last year and not come because I couldn't get to carry my band. No disrespect but I just was not coming without my, without my unit so. Uh, I, 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 I give thanks and I, you know what I mean and uh, we, we, uh, we are aware too you know it's not because even for touring with your band we are aware that our music is, is new and it's growing so a lot of the times a promoter cannot afford to bring 10 of us here because we cannot fill up the shows and whatever but we see that the music is growing the crowds are growing people are coming in and the quality of music that we're able to present with a band is, is way higher so so we, we need the support from the from the from the promoters to also to believe in our product and believe in what we are doing and make the sacrifice and understand yeah you may not it's not all about the money and how much this you can make but it's the growing of the industry because if, if the promoters don't grow the industry and, 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 and invest in the youths then 10 years from now they'll find themselves not being able to put on any shows like this because there'll be nobody here to perform so the live music for me is an integral role of, of, of what we are doing and I'm, I'm just a supporter of that. Yeah, and uh, we also, you know, when you talk about live music, I always think of, of course, the bands which come up now also, like, be it Raging Fire, be it Pentatosh, be it Daptonic Crew, you know, so you have a lot of bands, live bands, again, from Jamaica, which is so beautiful. Maybe we just listen to a little piece of another tune now. Warrior from Kabbalah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah No, no, no Yeah, yeah Man a real warrior today Warrior tomorrow same way Man a real warrior today Tomorrow we now go straight Yeah, yeah Man a real warrior today Warrior tomorrow same way Man a real warrior today Tomorrow we never stray Man a survivor Black version a MacGyver Fit the people them where you cry to Nina Say me a me own a designer Liner Judah Selassie I forever In a dem ya time ya Oneness I am a ya blifer Deep in a meditation me take a dive ya Link bub oil Orthodox and 12 tribe ya Them thing the people fi remind of Yeah Man a real warrior today Warrior tomorrow same way yeah, yeah. Man a real warrior today Tomorrow will not go straight Is used to connect with the, the forces of nature and the spirit You know what I mean? So even in Jamaica we have a lot of culture That has been True religion and certain thing has been neglected You know what I mean? And you find that ones really shy away from them ancestral history you know what I mean, and connecting with them roots, especially of African nature in Jamaica. You know what I mean, them tell you say anything black no good. You know, them tell you for born over, and them tell you say them things is evil. You know what I mean, 
even I and I as Rastafari about certain things where I feel if we if we did a you know really hide the knowledge and, and really reconnect and realize that certain things was brought down upon us through religion and through slavery, we would more find a closer connection to our ancestry. And in, in, in a song like Warrior, these are the things we're talking about, you know, standing up and really fighting for that, knowing say you're gonna get persecution for what you're doing. You know what I mean? I'm sure all of the items receive certain levels of persecution for burning certain fire. You know what I mean? But it's still something we're after the hook. We believe in it. We believe that this is the time for it. And you know what I mean? We just have to do what the king said for do. You know what I mean? Which is for uplift yourself, for educate. You know what I mean? Follow Rastafari creed. You know what I mean? Let the hungry be fed. Let the naked be clothed. Let the sick be nourished. Let the elders be cared for. And the infants. You know what I mean? So it's like these are the things where we are dealing with in other music. You know what I mean? And now is the time someone could just do it, you know? And the reggae revival is at the same time, of course, a Rasta revival, as I would put it. And Kabaka, you know, you live in a yard which is connected to the 12 tribes of Israel. And I think it is very interesting because when we look back into the 70s, a lot of the roots reggae artists from that period in time, they were closely connected to the 12 tribes of Israel. And maybe Kabaka, you can tell us some more about the importance, for example, of the 12 tribes for the reggae revival? Well, it's an important thing because 12 tribes of Israel is a special place to a lot of us, you know what I mean? I am fortunate enough to seat up, you know, amongst an elder from the 12 tribe, which is actually my manager's father, you know, Rupert Tyler, who is a great runner for Jamaica and a man who traveled all around the world with Prophet Gad, spreading Rastafari message. You know what I mean? And it's like, I and I now picking up that work in at these times and spreading the message of Rastafari through the music and through the works. You know what I mean? So a lot of us link up on the grounds of 12 tribe of Israel, right there on Hope Road. You know what I mean? And we roll our eyes, you know what I mean? We sip up with food, we reason. You know, sometimes we argue amongst ourselves because Rastafari is a thing where Nobody can really define Rastafari. Every one of them own either standing of it. So sometimes we in some heated debate about even Rastafari and about the Bible and, and, and all of these things. So these things is what help you grow and give it even content for putting out the music. Because if we don't have no content, then we are going to sing in the music. You are going to find that we sing in the same old messages them over and over and over. And the thing kind of get cliche. So we have to take it to our next level. And, and 12 Chives of Israel is a special place for a lot of where you know, live music. That's another home for live music in Jamaica as well. You know what I mean? So big up to all of the elders them and the youths them from 12 Chives of Israel. Give thanks, Kabaka. Yeah, we listen now to a beautiful piece of music from Alba Ma, La Jali Boy. I became so disobedient. Evidently, Babylon can't represent me no more. For day, I pray. Send the leaders and lost them way, cause enough of them gone. I say, let them leave the way, go say for me day. I pray. I said that you them the lost them way. I long time I your talk is like them never listen. I tell them stop shipping the shine and glisten. Well, every day they get they get a you get missing by the gun. I see the now. I can I your burn when it dig without the leg. His majesty got in my head creator I got flames from Rome, dirty paper I see 
I mentioned it earlier, what is also striking about the generation of this reggae artist that they are very connected to the foundation. You know, I remember when Pete and me did interviews before in the last couple of years, you very seldom came across artists who come with names like you, Mandel, Augustus, Pablo, and who really have this knowledge. And Ibama, you know, I know you grew up on all this old roots music. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about it you know how it did influence you and yeah like like as we said before like you know my grandfather was a popular man in the community and you know he used to have a sound system so most of the songs them when we used to play on theme sound system you know vinyl at them time they them find them way inside of the house and like on a Sunday, I used to be that, like the center of attraction. So, you know, we used to dance while everybody eating, you know, or drinking, you know, whatever. And everybody was excited at the time because, you know, I used to sing and dance to these songs, you know, of the 60s and the 70s and, you know, 80s too, you know, as if it was songs of my era. And we grew up with them kind of roots there, them kind of knowledge there. We grew up with old people. So, we kind of have an old soul more times and people see me. So, oh, your songs are old fashioned, all oh, your moves. So. so, we carry that kind of energy, that kind of teaching into the music. At first, you know, when we started out, we tried to write songs, you know, find all the popular artists so as to give these lyrics, you know, these music, these 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 words to, you know, so as to get them to sing them. You know, my brother, them tell me, so you need to start sing them because you sound good, you know, when you make we hear them singing when you write. So, it really started for me, them time, then it was always popular music. All always you know positive music at them time um after all these writing you know and starting the music you know then came rastafari you know and you know for some for some people it started different some people start just a trying around them rasta breaching for me it started food you know i started you know meditating about rastafari through food you know me just they own my rasta breaching them they might eat idol food me and a rasta them start, them start speak about our Haile Selassie, Marcus Giaffe, you know, and his big consciousness. And them kind of teachings eh, just come off from me. And it come out in my music. It come out in how we live, how we move, how we greet with friend them. And you see me. And you see red, green, and gold when you see me. You know, and you see Haile Selassie when you see me. So, you know, don't be afraid. Give thanks, man. It's music, it's positive music, it's reggae music. And it is on our eye, and we young. And, you know, just I bring it to them. Give thanks, Ibama. And, you know, are there like connections to elder music, maybe proto can elder musicians, when I think, for example, of Inner the Yard, China's place, you know, where you see young people and old foundation vintage artists coming together, and maybe I do not know who of you would like to say well, something about it. Like, you know, probably we could have made a small comment, because, you know, when, when I was introduced to Roland, you know, and I went into Tough Gun Studio, like at the first time, you know, after recording Will I Wait, you know, then him asked me like, you know, more hear a song where you're right, like more hear the next song where you're right. And, you know, I was like, more hear some rhythm, you know, and at the time he wanted to hear the lyrics that I had and the melody, so as to get musician to come in and make rhythm. So, me meet a British name, Danny Basie, who is, <laughs> you know, who, who, plays, who plays with the indignation and you know at the time him schooled me you know simply you know with, without him even knowing at the time so you know we get a chance to meet them people because we hear about them when they play with Sisla, when they play with other artists and you know for me come up and close with them and make music with them you know it you know it's a nice thing it's a great thing so we say you know thanks to mr danny again you know for the opportunity and we love that okay give thanks i'm a man and I would, I'm, I'm not sure if you, Pierre or David, if you have questions before we open it up to the public. Yeah, I have a, a number of questions for uh, our special guest here. And just to say, it's so inspiring to have you all here, to hear what you all have to say about this movement, which is so inspiring. And it's also very inspiring to see that the audience is already so aware of the movement and what you're all putting forward. So. Thank you very much for joining us. 
My first question is for Protege, the first piece of music that Ellen played earlier, Kingston Be Wise. I wondered if you could just enlighten the good folks gathered here at uh, Reggae University in Rototom Sunsplash. What's the song really about? How did it come together? What's the story of it being released? And so on. Okay, Kingston Be Wise was written I think 23rd of May 2010. That's before my first album came out. We were up by the dub club of Gabriel Selassie and Skyline and I was watching the city burn when the government went into Tivoli Gardens and killed over a hundred people in pretty much cold blood. Now it was Janine's birthday so we were all up there you know supposedly going to celebrate her, her, her Earthstrom and then all of this was happening so it was up there when I was just watching you know as I said if you, you've been up to dub club so you know you're looking over the entire city of Kingston and you could just see the smoke and you could see the you know what was happening it was then where I, I really started to write that song if you listen to the lyrics in that song and um it, 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 it's really talking about that, that specifically, but also giving a history because um, when 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 Pinnacle was burned down by the government and scattered Rastafari into the inner city and kind of pushed them back a wall and in, in that same community until they were forced out of there by the same government that built up Tivoli Gardens. That's why you hear me make reference to that in that song also. But it's specifically dealing with all the geopolitics of what's going on, the, the fact that Jamaica as a country really has no control over anything that they do. It, 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 you know, when the when the world powers say, you know, jump, we basically ask how high, and some of the time seem very excited to jump that high also. So I wanted to just play my part to let people know to be wise. And when I even I say be wise, now it's not about to even listen to what I say, cause I don't have a problem with somebody disagreeing with the song, but at least spark um, thinking. Because in Jamaica, in schools, we are not taught to be critical thinkers. We are taught to be regurgitators of information that is given to us by teachers and that is one of the major problems we have in Jamaica now is that we, we don't do critical thinking that's why it's easy to hear a rumor and believe it or see something and call it fact because we are not taught to think and this song is just something I wanted to put out a word sound to spark some debate something you know what I mean it's not about right or wrong because what is right and wrong but it's just about critical thinking and that song was one of the ones that I decided to do for that and then I didn't want to release it in the heat of everything while everybody was speaking about it so I held it off my first album and waited till the second album it was really hard to hold that song for for two years but um, you know I really wanted to put it out when when it was all died down because when you release things amidst emotions it's too you understand so when everything is calmed down or maybe I thought that you know we could revisit this and a lot of the music I hear from the bridge is, is is so potent and yeah it might sound good and you sing the chorus and it nice you know but when you really dig within the lyrics of the item you can see that we're a generation that is w well read and educated so we can't be you can't just call away you know oh, them you and sorry the next thing too is that one thing I wanted to do is to make to be a musician to play instrument to sing songs to put out words on it's an admirable profession it's an admirable thing to do and we are led to think that oh it's a waste thing is a is a joke thing because of whatever reason but what are you going to say when you see the youth standing in front of you as educated minds and oh you're a lawyer and you're a doctor and you're a politician but I can I can speak with you and you don't hold anything over me I, I am as educated as you are and and a lot of us may not have may not have the degrees and these things to show it but you know that's that's paper and that can be taken away and burnt up but you can't take the knowledge that is baked inside of the subconscious and inside of the mind so yeah that's what the music bought and that song was showing that it's a long explanation but yeah yeah thank you very much very good
explanation. Um, slight, slight related question. Since you mentioned about this desire to be a musician and creating music, uh, I wanted to ask, can you talk a little bit about uh, your family involvement in music? Because you've got parents who were both performers, and your cousin, of course, was uh, involved in production and so on. So can you speak about that, and was that a help or a hindrance? It was a, it, it was a help. I mean, in terms of my mother, um, Lana Bennett, who you know is, is mostly known for her song "Breakfast in Bed." That I mean, up to now, I haven't had a song as as successful as that. So I don't even have the biggest song in my own family. You know what I mean? And by the way, my mom is here over there, sitting in the shade. So stand up and say hello, mom. Stand up and say hello. Big uh, I mean, a, le a legend in her own right, and um, it, it was growing up like that. The, the main help I got from my mother was the psychological help that I got from her to maintain this. She always used to tell me that, remember, when you come off stage, come back down to zero. You know, you might get excited when thousands of people are screaming your name, and it, it is a thing, it's, it's almost... It, it, it is to separate the fame and the hype from the substance and that's the main thing mom to always told me to come back down to zero and uh, understand that um you know you are no better than anybody because of this profession you're just playing your role and playing your part and it's the big best lesson i've learned in the music it's just that i'm just one part doing my role and my time is going to come and go when you know i'm not being talked about in music and so you're all just playing our part to, to be caretakers of the music and make sure it stands up to pass it on to the others that are coming up after us so that the music and the message and the consciousness can live on after protege is forgotten about and you know remember none of the song they were nothing but it, 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 the message lives on and, and that's the main thing I learned from my, my mother and my father thank you um, yeah a, a question for Ibamar. Ellen was mentioning before that you have some connection with Max Romeo and that you're both based in Linstead. And he operates a recording studio there. And I know for a time he had a sound system that he was playing in a place called Vibes Corner. So I just wondered if you could talk a little bit more about the connection that you had with him, the work that you had with him, and what that connection was like. Ah, uh, Max Romeo. I'm gonna put on an iron shirt and chase it and out of earth. <laughs> Boom. Uh, at the time, at the time, um, Max Romeo basically um, gave me the opportunity to record my first song, you know, my first single, and it was the first song to be released for me. Um, we just did it, a right song, and the bridge them tell me, say, yo, Max Romeo, a vice artist, so you really need for go around. We go around there like, you know, two to three times, you know, for the while, for the same week. And, you know, like on the third day, like, him say, all right, we're going to record the artist. At the time, you know, the... The guitar, the, the guitarist for Dub Tonic was the engineer, and after recording the song, you know, I could I could hear him inside the room saying to Max Romeo, uh, Max Romeo, the little artist there, you know, him record a nice song, you know, we feel like it's gonna go somewhere, and you know, from that day, you know, we really we really had it in the back of our head, you know, so you know, music is what we're supposed to do, you know, me, yeah, and you know, we find ourselves at school, you know, we started university. And we go back and forth, and it music really kind of take me, you know, even more at that time because we find ourselves under financial difficulties, and you know we couldn't finish university, and then came music. So Max Romeo connection with me is really like you know the start um, is really giving me the seal of approval to say um, Ibamar, you know, you're really ready, and that led me to meeting Fatis Borel and you know many other producers. So we give thanks to Max Romeo as the man who really cement Ibamar and say, oh, time for you, you know? Thank you. 
Yeah, I just want to add something. Um, when when you spoke about Danny Basie and um, meeting him and doing music with him, I also want to say that Danny Basie is the person that w is even responsible for Don Carleone recording me because it was Danny that was, you know, I went up there one day because even though Don and I are family, um, we really didn't do any music together up until the song Dread. It was DJ Kareem who recorded arguments and really, really started me out there. So DJ Kareem is, you know, really, I have to give thanks to him to forgive him opportunity. But Danny Basie is, is, is a, like, I don't know how many of you know him. He's played for Sizzler for 15 years, played for Luciano, Garnet Silk, everybody you can really think about. And it's a wealth of information. I really suggest to Ratatam to, to have him on a panel, one of these Ratatam, so that he can he can explain about music and just to just to throw it out there again give thanks to danny for believing in me because i remember when not many people did he was always telling dan that listen you need to record this youth right now because you know he's going to go out and there and, and do good for the music so big up to danny and for what he's doing for me and for a host of other young artists jesse royal all of them danny has played a big role in many many of us careers you know yeah. thank you Yeah. Um, yeah, question for Kabaka about hip hop and um, oh. specific <laughs> influences and what's your take on hip hop? Well, hip hop played a very important role in my life still. You know, I remember growing up, you know, you know, my younger days, we used to see certain songs play on the TV because we had like a TV station named JBC and every once in a while they play certain commercial songs and certain hits. And we remember, you know, Aine Kamosi song. You know what I mean? Nah, 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 nah. You know what I mean? Them song there and it's like, it was just the biggest thing for me at the time. Like, I remember us up and down in a school singing them song there. And, you know, it's when I reached the high school now. I moved from where I was living. I moved from Mona to Hope Passions, which if you know Kingston are right beside each other. Kingston 6, I grow still. And I'm reaching this community where I get cable TV. And cable TV, you know, remember this little youth. <laughs> This little you live across the road from me. And we usually link and ride bicycle and bus wheelie and them thing there. And the man in my house one day and him flick the thing on a channel. We say BET. And I say, wait, what is going on there? You know, and I see Puff Daddy and the family and I see them time the biggest mass just drop out, you know. Cause this are like this are like 96. You know what I mean? Biggest mass just drop out and so a couple of them songs I'm still playing, so I get to see a little biggie and then it's like my book up on this group named the root and clan <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. And then it's like, we just never see anything like this before. Them man, you dress them own away. Them design them own shoes. Wu-Tang is responsible for me wearing these wallabies. <laughs> you know, they had their own brand, Wu Wear Wallabies, where they put out the Wu-Tang sign on the wallabies themselves. And them thing that does, them thing that does help me for really shape how me I move as an individual. So, them have a song named Triumph when nine of them are, I think ten of them have verse, no chorus in them. Anatomically, Socrates' philosophies and hypotheses can't define why we drop in these mockery. Just, we can sing the whole song for you. You know, so them thing they transform me. So when, when me and Abby and doing it, them two we would over there, so I'm a management, you know. Them man, them, me and them man they tried in from first farm in a high school. And we did have a crew named Bam Squad. You know what I mean? And just because how we see Wu Tang and move, it's like everywhere in the school you see 20 away walking around the place. Sure. You know what I mean? And we're rolling deep and every time we go out, oh, we yeah. roll let, me just, I, let me just confirm this because I went to the same high school as Kabaka. <laughs> but them little youth here move so hard in the, in the school, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
them really step like a unit, you know, them, them display unity from them time. Trust me, yeah. trust me. So, I have always had, you know, that, that unity kind of free towards myself. And I see that in a lot of these hip-hop groups, especially wu -Tang. So, you know, influences my listeners, of course. I wasn't a big Jay-Z fan. I know Proto vexed with me because of that. Because Jay-Z, I'm rapper still, or one of them. But me the more like the Nas, the Talib Kweli, the Common, the most deaf. Even the big pun, even though him talk about a lot of, you know, but it's rhymers, you know what I mean? I remember even Eminem. Me say, where this white rapper you come from? And the man I go so hard. You know, but, you know, him early stuff. Me used to listen to Eminem early stuff. You have a youth named Cannabis who come from Jamaica, who moved to like New York and then place there. And it's just one of the illest lyricists I ever hear in my life. So when you hear a song from me like the song, where it's like two and a half minutes of me just spitting verse, no chorus, you know what I mean? It's because of them hip-hop influence them. Because me used to just, people are linked together in a circle, I think them called the cypher. And everybody does a chop verse after verse and everybody I try to see who verse better. And me know Proto talk about that earlier. There's no competition thing in other movement, but hip-hop kind of have that little element about it. Just like sound clash and them thing and, and when artists clash on stage, all out of unity and love, same way. You know, so the lyrical aspect is what really did drive me. me. Me never really gravitate towards a song because of the chorus. You know what I mean? So like, when 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 a, when an artist drop an album and you hear him song when he put a video out, when hip hop start to get commercialized, them was the songs I skip past when I listen to the album. You know, because them they put a song about the club or them they put a song about some party thing, which is all cool and catchy. But I want to hear the lyrics. You know, I want to hear how him talk about a story. Or I want to hear some double meaning, some wordplay, which is something I respect protege a lot for, the wordplay and lyrics that you have to think about. You know what I mean? And it, it, it's them things that I love about hip-hop, the artistry and things. So, you know, I want to make something clear though. It's not that I did hip hop and then stopped doing hip hop and went into reggae. You know, it's just that hip hop was easy for me when I just started to do music. Cause hip hop is not about, I never grew up singing. You know what I mean? I never have no singing background. So like melodies and, and key and them, I never know nothing about them something there. So hip hop is just a thing where you're just chatting lyrics on and on and on. So that was easy for me. You know, so when I used to try and DJ and sing, it's something where it had to develop over time. You know what I mean? So when the voice start developing now, that is when we as Bebe Rap felt, you know, go to put out reggae music and then eventually we just fuse it together as one and just move forward like that, you know? Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's good. yeah uh, question for Dutty. Now, Ivo was talking before about doing work at Tough Gong, and I understand that you also have some connection doing work at Tough Gong, and I wanted, if you could explain a little bit about that, and then what inspired you to pick up the pen and make that transformation to begin writing? Um, yeah, I, I, I've lived a very fortunate life, you know, I really, I realize now I wake up a lot every day and I just give that I give a lot of thanks, you know, because I just always somehow end up in the right place at the right time. A lot. And uh, Tough Gang was just one of those instances where I just it started at the Bob Marley Museum. I worked there and I helped with um, Rita Marley's Africa Uni Unite um, event. And it came to Jamaica for the first time and I, and I helped to do the youth symposium. And anyway, things lead to another and eventually all of a sudden I'm at Tough Gang and I am the communications coordinator for the whole, the group, you know, the, the, the museum, Tough Gang, 
and the foundation and you know just a youth and <laughs> I, I just get to I, I had so much opportunity to shape the direction in which tough gang is perceived you know through public relations especially and and um that was like a training ground for me because uh, you know especially like a lady there who is very dear to my heart sister lana she really just keep me under her wing and and show me certain things and 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 then allow me to do my thing you know and I just kept realizing, you know, I was working with Protege at the time too, you know, this was like around 2009 when I remember the day him come over to my house and him say, yo, come make a reason at the car and like him say, yo, I want to, I think I want to actually just go try go mainstream this year and him lay out the plan for the year of 2009. Not like super detailed, but him just said, boy, April I'm going to put out a video, make that run for summer, maybe around December we do a show. And April the man put out a video, December we do a show. You know, and I realized just this parallel in my life, I, I kept interacting with music and, and, um, and I had a, I believe I have an eye for uh, righteous things, you know. And I just can't tell before somebody said boss then that, that you're on the way and if you just stay humble and, and, and perfect your craft, you're good. And um, yes, yeah, same with Tough Gang, same with Protege. And then I just decided, I mean, I love to express. I've always written, always written. Like I used to run a website back in like late high school into college and it had like a lot of membership you know it was like before Facebook days when it was just the message board and it was like one of the bigger websites in Jamaica and and it's just me in my college dorm room you know <laughs> with uh, sitting in my boxers and <laughs> this thing is happening and manifesting before me and um it was the strength of my writing. I, I keep seeing that it was me writing, just giving voice to a certain energy and then let people carry it forth, you know? And it come to this day where the same thing happening with the revival, but just with more focus, you know? It, it's learning from those experiences and um, the book, writing the book and learning from that experience and going out and talking to college students and stuff like that. Um, to get to this point, and I just, I, I, I will never leave this path because I still wake up, I wake up this morning giving thanks and I'm going to wake up again tomorrow giving thanks, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I have uh, a couple of questions, one, one for that year, one for, for Protégé. The first one is connected in a way with uh, the one David did. Uh, it's about uh, your work at Tough Gong. And in, uh, I read your book, and in your book you're talking about the uh, vibes of certain places, I would say uh, sacred places. And I know you had idea uh, to do something for uh, 56 of Road or, or uh, Marcus Garvey Drive uh, to get those places important for the present of uh, reggae music. And, and I'm, I'm asking that because uh, when uh, people from Europe, a reggae lover from Europe of, of, or from US is coming from Jamaica, is uh, checking those sacred places, I would say, as Studio One, ch uh, Channel One in Maxfield Avenue, and, and you can mention dozen of places era and those places are silent or closed or, or shut it down so it's important to to do something for for the vibes of those places uh, so, and, and I know you you did something uh, to do Marcus Garvey Drive for example important for the present of reggae music um. I just, just like Ratatam again, like the energy, I, I, I'm interested in the ways of generating an energy. And you, know, you never know what is going to come out, but you just know what the direction is you want to go, you know. And I always, anywhere I am, that is how I approach the thing. Like, the energy around me needs to be generated in a certain direction. That's how I going to put my contribution towards that. And same, I was at Tough Gang and the opportunity was there again. Um, 
they were clearing out an old storage room or something and we just start talking about what if it was like a little art gallery or something you know and Stephanie Marley who runs that establishment as you know the managing director she was feeling that idea you know she actually she may have even instigated the idea actually um, and I just kept adding fire you know fuel to that fire because I realized she gave me a little leeway you know you know and um, we launched a gallery you know art gallery and I just thought that was a part of the whole arts movement giving youths an opportunity to come and put a little thing like the, the, we opened with a uh, youth who's around my age I think and Rastafari youth who paint a wicked portrait of his majesty and it was the centerpiece of the launch you know the, we had the minister of tourism come there and shake hand and talk about him going by it and all know him don't buy it but you know how them talk already and for the press and then walk off him do that but at the same time him, he, it was an opportunity for us to put some spotlight and some positivity happening um, and I don't know if that answers the question. But <laughs> okay, uh, protégé. Uh, I will tell you my compliments for for your uh, video of I and I because I think it's very re representative of the vibe of the of the regular okay. vibe movement okay. because it's youths in the street of Kingston being so active and showing themselves to people and doing this love chain. So would like to know. I, I was there uh, like uh, some days before the the video wa was shot and the, the vibe. Was what, what, what was that? So I was. I, I would like to ask you about uh, the concept of the video. How, how you got the idea to do that video? That that video was so spur of the moment, but it is a testament to the unity that is displayed amongst the whole movement right now. Dotty was in Jamaica. My album had come out two weeks before that, and we were going to do a live show to commemorate the release of the album called Life from the Capital. I realized that I really wanted to to um. I really wanted Dotty to be in the video. That was one of the main things. I was like, yo, we're going to have to shoot the video. I think we decided on Thursday to shoot the video on right. Friday. Right. Yeah. So it was Thursday evening and I just started to call. We got a lot of help. Caris is here, helped out with it. Leslie, the whole team of... of um, by the way, when you want something to done, um, work with a lot of women because they get stuff done real quick. And... and so there was a lot of help. We about six or seven people shot that video, and I mean Michael Kushner directed it. But I basically called everybody I knew that that had cameras that shot videos. So Taj Francis, Ikem Smith, Matthew, it, 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 Poro. Poro is 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 an angel, by the way. And Poro, who shoots for Rhythm, I think he did the cover for for, for Rhythm magazine too. And and Sabria Simon, who is an alien with the camera, who is. So it's basically about seven or eight people that shot it. It was one take. There was only one take for that whole video. It was, and we had. I, I wanted to walk down Hope Road from 12 Tribe of Israel right down to 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 King's House, and we didn't get any permission. We didn't do anything. We just called. We had people there cooking food from Meals and Wheels. We had artists. We there were so many different type of people in that video, not just musicians and we just came together and did it and and it, and it manifested into something great and that just shows the unity that within less than 24 hours we we're able to bring uh, and get people to come out to come out on the road with me at, with us at 5 30 6 in the morning people who have work and whatever and just on short notice came through and supported and represented so that video is special to me it, and as I say to do it in one take no retakes walking down the road and a product like this it could never be done without unity and people coming together and that video so that video for me is a perfect representation of what this re, um, revival is about and it's just to get it done get get things happen you can put in the semantics of names and all this and any day but it's to produce it's to produce stuff and put all the energy out there to people and I think that video captures that in a in a, in a good way and actually if you go 
if you go to the if you go to the reggae revival Facebook page, the big cover picture is from that day in and front of Bob Marley Museum when we're I, passing it. Right, and I have to add to Dotty came up with the idea to 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 print a lot of sheets with quotes from His Majesty Marcus Garvey, Walter Rodney, who Walter Rodney has played is probably the biggest influence in me even the type of music I make that what I Walter Rodney is what pointed me to even Marcus Garvey and to even his majesty himself and we know that Jamaican government banned Walter Rodney from coming back to Jamaica in their infinite wisdom but I mean that those sheets were given away to people on the road even the police came there and when the police was like what's happening by the time they spoke to us they realized that all right these youths are not troublemakers and they were escorting us police officers escorting rasta youths in front of king's house jamaica where 40 years ago 40 years ago, you know, Hugh Shearer and Buster Mantu would have had them kicking out our teeth, out our mouth. So we give thanks to the progress for the, the Rastafari elders who have gone, gone, to, gone through so much trouble to make our job. We have a different fight. We don't have the fight where we are getting hold down and cutting off with locks and beat up and kick up and box up, right? So we give thanks to those people that have died and suffered to put us in a situation to sit here and play music. Right? Okay, I hope we still have a little time because I see a van out there already. But I want to give you the chance, the audience, if you have any questions, to come forward to ask our very special guests. One, two, one. No. One, two. Check, check, check. Well, first, greetings from Costa Rica. Uh, I had a long travel from there, 12 hours. Um, actually, we had you guys like back in November, uh, Prodigy and uh, Kavaka. We're missing you, Ivo Marpa. We hope we can get you there. Then, thank you very much for what you're doing with your music. You're changing my country, and I'm pretty sure you're changing the entire world. With your lyrics, with your music, with what you're doing. <clears throat> good times, good times. After that, um, my question is for any of you. You think Reg is going back to the right track? As you say, I hope I start on the 60s, but I, I born in 87, so I couldn't make it, right? So it's Reg getting on the right track back, as you say, uh, after Bob Marley. We're missing like the right lyrics, like the positive lyrics. Right now we're seeing like dancehall artists changing from dancehall to roots and like chanting songs and everything. And uh, like the new rhythms are from the 60s, but really like new rhythms. So it's reggae going to like on, back on the right track or what is going on right now for you guys? Why do you think? For me, it, it's going back to the right track. Everybody in the house, is reggae going back on the right track? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Natural. No, we give thanks because we had a really great time in Costa Rica. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they, they went through, you know, a lot of efforts just to get us there. You know, it was me, Proto, you know, Indignation, you know, Janine, Raging Fire. Midnight. Midnight. You know what I mean? And that was a great, great, great vibration. Just to watch Midnight perform especially yeah. was just a humbling experience for all of us. And we learned a lot. So big up to everybody in Costa Rica. You know what I mean? CR, yeah. Puerto Rico. Yeah, just, 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 just one thing still. Um, no matter that I speak about dancehall and artists, you know, stop doing dancehall and doing reggae music. Um, that is not what we're looking for necessarily, because dancehall is our music. We created that too. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
but we need is positive music you know and conscious messages and you know for some of the people who think that you know music doesn't have you know an impact on your your motives then you're gone wrong and we just ask for a balance you know for people to try and make some music where people can you know live through you know and carry out them daily struggles through you know because you know our country we have day to do day to day problems you know and people need redemption songs songs for them can listen to you know and really find themselves and really carry out you know them daily duties and not for really worry about that so um the music where we are though you know is a positive one and you know the whole revival thing really connect with that and the, the reggae music never dead and it never dead around on the back you know we just need people for understand say yes the music did always and make and we young and true we're vibrant we just have bring it yeah yeah man so great yeah, give thanks for that, because that's a great point uh, I ever make. It's not about it's not about a division between dancehall and reggae music, right? You have a thing named look into my eyes, tell me what you see, can you feel my pain? Am I your enemy, right? You, 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 you have you have songs like like a song like Look Into My Eyes, it's one of the greatest social commentaries in the history of Jamaican music. Not just reggae or not just dancehall music, right? So, and then at the same time too, there's people who do, you know, say, do dancehall and come to or singing on reggae. So, singing on reggae music, but it's not about singing on the rhythm because we don't want you to come with no loose message from the reggae vibration either. It's about the messages, you know. And that is my problem with dancehall a lot of the times where, where once we say, yeah, well, we just report what happened at the garrison and, and what Whatever, whatever but there are ways to go about reporting what's happening inside the garrison it doesn't mean for say make me take out my gun and bust your head that, 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 that that's not a way to report so it is when, when I when I listen to dancehall and there there are so many talented lyricists in dan, in, in dancehall Sprague song but let me tell you about peace look yeah. on them tune the, lyrics the, the, there, there are many songs there, there are many songs even done by dancehall artists that that is very good social commentary but then maybe people don't want to promote that side of the music so the dancehall artists say but me make three songs I talk about them thing yeah, and it not get no this so let me go do that but then now you have to look at why you doing music for fortune and fame and for recognition or to deliver what you want to deliver so that is my thing now you're going to make sacrifices there are songs that there are songs that the item have that may get a lot of play in europe that jamaican radio may not even look at so what am i going to do what is album are going to do switch up what i'm going to do no so that's how you know the real musician them and the people who are doing the music for the hearts and not the music for the charts car we are stand by with messages but it's not a division between dancehall and reggae is as exactly what Iba Mar said and is about that we want positive messages at that well give thanks yeah we have more questions over there I will stand up still. Give thanks. First of all, as an elder song and a love lover of Jamaican music, I just want to give thanks, you know, because the eyes don't bring back the hope for elder song people like me, you know, like the eyes say, grow up with roots music, you know, it's my music, you know. I started listening 82 to reggae music, so I'm 44 now, so Jano, I want to just give thanks for that. But the question I have is, after the eyes I mentioned Mystic Gorillas, I got to see Mystic Gorillas and live even with Billy Mystic in his house. After his band kind of don't move no more and don't play no more, was Roots Underground and really a connecting element to the eyes then because they are almost 20 years old now? For me personally, Roots Underground. Did you say Roots Underground? Yeah. yeah. For me personally, and a lot of credit needs, needs to go out to Roots Underground and the Dub Tani crew because those were two bands doing it when it wasn't cool to be a part of a band. When I went and saw Dub Tani, 
same yellow who yellow was the engineer, right? When I saw Dubtonic for the first time, you know, my head was completely blown up. Like that was when I said, "Hold on, but them sound like Sly and Rabbit. This is happening right now." It gave me so much confidence to form my band. I, I, I can say that Dubtonic and Roots Underground are two major reasons why I decided to have a band. Dutty can tell you, I was like, "Yo, I saw these youths playing, and it's a band, and they're doing all these things and playing dub, and they're not singing for ten minutes, and it really influenced me to have somebody in my generation doing it." So, I, believe me, it's Roots. I don't even know how you asked that question, but it is. It's, 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 yeah, man, give thanks, man. Cause Roots Underground and Dubtonic is is huge influences for me. Let me. Because, because for me, you know, with mystical healers, it kind of, the, the era of individual bands stopped, you know. Yeah, true, true. I myself just found out recently that Roots Underground is such a long distance already, time of distance all the way playing music, you know. I thought they are just one of you guys too, you know, so they're, they're that's why I asked the question, too, because I never realized that they are from way back in time already on the scene. Yeah man, those are those are seniors. Where where are the juniors right now? And Roots Underground and Dub Tonic, people that don't know their music, go check them out. They're brilliant bands and um, doing great things for reggae music. Hi. So let me just quickly add to it because there is there's a level of um the, the, we talk a lot about going back to the 70s and them vibe there. But there's an in-between phase that, you, that you're pointing to now. That I think because the reggae revival came out so quickly, it like it really took Jamaica by storm in a way, you know, like it just happened like it, this thing is being called reggae revival. And I think it it come out so fast that we didn't get time to really show a proper respect to that generation because them are the holders of the fort. That is how I view them and actually that is how I, I, I intend at this point in my upcoming reggae revival book to devote a chapter to the holders of the fort because exactly as Protege said, it wasn't cool them time there. Now it's cool, like look at this is star power here, now the youths they want to be like this. But it never cool them time there and them man they just they were unwavering and it's, it's just to, to be able to see that happen for me to see Dub Tonic in studio and like when them do bands incorporated which is their devoted live music show um, it, it, it's very life-changing for a youth who grow up on dancehall and hip-hop and, and don't have a lot of knowledge. When you start listening to reggae, I just born that same year, you know? And it's just, it's just five years ago I started learning about, about the thing. So I am coming from the perspective of an enthusiastic fan. And I think that the stuff that I've been saying and the stuff that you can expect in the book is like, okay, this is what the fans are seeing because we're really, we're digging this, we're really into this vibes. And it's cool and we love it and we want more. Yeah. And, 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 and so it's almost like we are the checks and balances now. We are going to watch and see who really bring in the fire and who have the longevity and them thing there, you know, and, and just keep digging up them people there. Yes. Yes, sir. We just want to add one quick thing to that as well. Well, when we talk about people at all the fort, I just want to give a small recognition to all of the backing bands who have been supporting artists throughout all the years. Because and backing vocalists, of course, no, but uh, vocalists for me is a part of the band, you know. It's a whole <laughs> Because at the eye of them, really they do whole live music together. You know, because not a lot of us, as, as OJ said, have the demand and the power to, to demand that we can charge this amount of money to bring a band. So to facilitate that is a great thing so that we can still deliver the music live. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's a great thing. Yeah. All right, all right. All right, <laughs> all right one thing. Hello. All right, the band them get real big up this day from Ibermar. So boy, you clap everybody. Yes, sir. Clap everybody. Okay. So, now, what, 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 is, what is very interesting is that outside of playing with their band, they play an integral part in the production of solar artists. So you find, say, 
musician from Doctonic Band, play for Ibama Rhythm them. Musician from Roots Underground, musician from Indignation, from Sync Fence, from just about any band will play with Ibamar. You know, so when you hear them nice music they on CD, piece of protege in it, piece of dub tonic in it, piece of roots on the crown in it. So clap them. And like like how we have the stage now. We have to thank engineers too. Yeah. So we have a big up Greg, Greg Morrison. Because in there with me. Greg say it. And we have to thank Roland McDermott, which is my engineer too. And you know, everyone will really have something positive to do with regular music. So just give thanks for the time and the energy again. Say yes, it. Sir. Bless. Yeah. True man, no matter how good your band is if you don't have a good engineer on the night boy trust that me name yourself, huh? trust me it's an important thing for real give thanks hi i have a question uh, one last question because we really have to wrap it up it's close to eight and so I'm on stage at 10.30, okay. so, so make sure you can yeah. check the... But oh, yeah. The lady has the, 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 the mic and there is Aria. I've got the you. mic. Bit of respect. <laughs> no, just wanted to say, because... Can, can you come a little bit closer so that we can hear you because of the, oh, the oh, sound oh, drumming? Oh, Sorry. Oh, oh, well, I tell you what, right? I'll come a bit closer, yeah? Because my husband... I'll take it closer. I'll take the mic closer. My husband so has driven me 1,600 miles from England to Ratatom for the second year. But give thanks. And I was born in 1960, so I've been through all of the people that you have talked about, and they shaped our lives, you see. And I've never been to Jamaica, but it was those artists that taught me that it's okay to be a black person in Britain, and that I can have ambition, and that I can do the things that I want to do and achieve, yeah? Yes. And you're coming back into that because you have a message to give to the young people, because in, in a way that was lost. But what I want to ask is that how can that message go outside of Jamaica because there's a huge reggae audience and people that need to get your message and I think you started to answer it with your book that you're writing and what you're going to bring forward but it's about taking that message forward and how that can be achieved. In, in Jamaica you said? No, outside, outside of. So uh, in England, in the other islands that where reggae music is big but that message mm -hmm needs to be there and needs to be put forward please Amen. well i just want to say i may not have the answer but i think everybody in the house tonight plays an important role so in that going, yeah. you know what i mean whenever you hear about something positive it's always important to spread the word you know what i mean tell a neighbor let somebody else know about what is happening because we can't do everything ourselves you know what i mean we depend on the item because it's, it's a collective thing you know what i mean and there's no real differentiation between even us and the item you know what i mean because it's one movement it is one you know blossoming whole vibration and it's all about spreading the word collectively everywhere you go you know make a one know say yo something is happening you might not know all the names involved or whatever but something is happening you know what i mean yeah so to, to, to add to that because that's what i wanted to, to say that before you ask the question the energy is really flowing right in this room um the thing is what we have on our side that that even Roots Underground and Dub Tonic just 10 years ago didn't have is the power of the internet right now with the Facebook and the Instagram and the Twitters and all these things that we use to communicate and you know I, 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 I urge all of you to go online and go and find Ibamar's page and websites and connections and Kabaka and myself and all these other artists it, it, it is as easy now to press enter on your computer and share the music so so I, I really, er and, and that's why we try to do these things, to put these pages out there so that you can connect, so we can say, here, here's this new song. And one thing I notice with all of us as the artists, too, we really put our music out there. We'll have it up for free on SoundCloud, so our YouTube, so you can just go and share it. And that's why we need the, the, the unity. We, 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 
yeah, we, we, we need to, 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 to separate the distance between the, the artists and the listeners of the music because that's all it is, you know. It is, it is, it is, we create the music and you listen to it. Everything else is a means in between to the ends and the ends is for the music to reach to you. So we're trying to, to narrow the distance in between us recording it and you hearing it. And we have seen that the internet has given us that. That's why a lot of this thing has been happening now. That's why it has been spreading so much because it's easy now for things to spread. So we, we really need the support of the people that like the music to share the music. It, you have no idea the difference that you make in, in sharing and spreading the music. So anybody that has any cards, anything to leave with us so that we can be in contact, contact with each other and share it and be a family together and move move this thing forward is greatly appreciated because I can tell you one of the things that I really want to see happen is I, I want to be touring with, with these youths. I want to be on the road. This is how it should be at all the festivals. Like all of us coming together and playing the music and doing it that way. But we need your support so please go online, take to the streets, do anything you need to do to spread the message. Share it with a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend. And I guarantee within two years you'll look on the difference that is being made and you can put your hand and say I, I played a part. I added a little spice to this part right now. And we are all be a part of it and we can all share it with our generations to come. So let's narrow the gap in between each other. Let's narrow the gap in between the generation that has come before us and, and us because we need the support of the elders in reggae music too because as we said there's so much knowledge to be gained from them and then we need to narrow the gap in between the children and youths that's coming up after us and make it one communal thing so i really urge you to go out there and help spread all of our music you know yeah, bless. all right um it's a very nice question, you know, when you really ask about how we can get that popular music, you know, that same positive music, you know, in the UK and you know other parts of the world. Um, Jamaica and UK have a strong connection, you know, from way back, and also you know the states, you know, and parts of the Caribbean. No. Like, I personally think in order for that music, this music that we are doing, you know, to spill over, it, it, we need a Jamaica presence. So, you know, the music also have to be popular in Jamaica. Because the UK, yeah, because the UK and the US and parts of the Caribbean really listens to what is going on in Jamaica. So, it starts with Jamaica first. Um, I think Europe is, is, is a bit different, you know, Europe on a whole is a bit different, it's about the music and, you know, that positive music and that nice reggae music, but for UK and US and other parts of the Caribbean, it really starts with we have to have that presence, so we have to just push it right, listen to me. Yeah, listen. Very, very, very true. It's a, it's a real talk that because even I've been to Europe, it's my fourth time through to Europe. I've been here for two months. I've never done a show in the Caribbean and I've never done a show in the UK. Never. N no, not yet, soon. But, but I, I, you know, it's a real good point, you know, the, for the music. And it's because the music is not has not soaked into the Jamaican culture yet. And we need a whole other conference to talk about why that is happening. So, <laughs> sometime, but at the end of the day, as I was say, is is an integral part that for playing. Okay, thank you so much. We really have to close it down now because as Protégé says, he's, he will be on stage tonight soon and also Ibama and I'm Kabaka, they're going to be on stage later on. But one more thing before I want a big round of applause. I really would like to mention the website reggae-revival.com and also the reggae... <laughs> language barrier, language barrier. <laughs>
True, true. Okay, okay, I go on. And also the reggae revival shirts which are on sale and also Dottie Bookman's book Tried and True, Revelations of a Rebellious Youth, just next to the reggae university at the Trenchtown Reading Center. And you should ch check out the Trenchtown Reading Center anyways. And also I want to mention tomorrow we have two reggae university sessions. The first one is on Sound Clash with Tony Matterhorn and Ricky Trooper. And the second one is on Foundation with Flabber Holt from Roots, Relics and Uroy. So we hope to see you all again tomorrow. And I want to give thanks to everybody. It was a wonderful session, two hours nearly. And I really enjoyed it. And I guess you enjoyed it too. Give thanks to everybody. Bless her, Lord. Hey, and we really, 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 really need We really, really, really need people to get onto the web presence. As you said, reggae minus revival. We say reggae-revival.com. And just link up. I have business cards too, so you can have it. But all the social media connections are there. And then we're going to have a discussion and see what is the direction of the thing we're really doing. See? Blessed love. Every day, yeah, yeah.